the endocrine system influences and affects wide-ranging and diverse areas of human physiology, homeostasis and metabolism. Together with the nervous system, they form the body's main regulatory mechanism, sensing and affecting the body through the emotional, neuroendocrine, immunological axis. The clinical presentation of endocrine conditions is often complex with several diverse signs and symptoms that cross the boundaries between organ classification systems. To be able to screen, diagnose and treat endocrine and metabolic conditions, you need to understand the actions and effects of endocrine hormones on the body, as well as homeostatic control and feedback mechanisms of associated glands. Let us briefly review clinically important endocrine glands. The pituitary. The anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, or the adenohypophysis, secretes human growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, and melanocyte stimulating hormone. The posterior lobe of the pituitary, or the neurohypophysis, secretes oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone, which is also called vasopressin. The thyroid gland secretes thyroxine and calcitonin. The parathyroid glands secrete parathyroid hormone. The pancreas secretes glucagon and insulin. The adrenal glands have two distinct regions, the cortex, which secretes the mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and androgens, and the medulla, which secretes adrenaline, also called epinephrine, and noradrenaline, also called norepinephrine. The gonads were covered under the genitourinary system. Endocrine and metabolic pathologies can arise from excess hormone secretion under secretion or from problems with hormone receptors and binding mechanisms. Let us briefly mention some of the commonest endocrine pathologies. These are dwarfism, gigantism, acromegaly, diabetes insipidus, hypo and hyperthyroidism, hypo and hyperparathyroidism, diabetes mellitus, Addison's disease, and pheochromocytoma. When screening for suspect endocrine and metabolic conditions, consider the following. Are there any unexplained weight changes? Are there any changes in appetite? Are there any changes in digestive or urinary function? Does the patient have polydipsia and or polyuria? Is there any lethargy or unexplained tiredness? Are there any focal or disseminated neurological symptoms like paresthesia? Has the patient developed undue sensitivity to cold or intolerance to heat? Are there any emotional disturbances like depression, anxiety and restlessness? Does the patient have a tremor? Do they have palpitations, increased or decreased heart rate or an irregular heart rhythm? Any evidence of exophthalmos? Do they have any symptoms in the neck region, such as constriction, swallowing difficulties, or voice changes? Are there any changes or problems with skin, hair, or nails, including thinning or thickening of the skin, increased or decreased skin pigmentation, skin dryness or excessive sweating, changes to nails or hair structure, increase or abnormal hair growth or hirsutism. Is the patient taking medications or supplements which could interfere with the hormone function or metabolism, such as contraceptives, iodine or licorice? Are there any childhood problems relating to gonadal development? Have there been any changes in libido or sexual habits? Is there any discharge from the nipples or galactorrhea? Is the patient infertile? Is there any evidence of gynecomastia? In a female patient, inquire about the age of menarche and or menopause. Any recent changes in the regularity or flow of the menstrual period? 
How would you define the patient's body habitus or physique? Does the patient have an abnormal distribution of muscle and fat? Are there any unusual headaches or visual problems? Are there any unusual or unexplained aches and pains? Have they had any operations, chemotherapy or radiotherapy treatments? Is there a family history of endocrine conditions? If the patient is a child, then inquire from an accompanying adult about problems with their growth rate or the development and shape of the limbs. This concludes the system-specific case history.